Have you ever wanted to try out a new operating system or app without needing a separate computer to run it on? Maybe you've heard a lot of talk about why Linux computers are becoming more popular at home, or you're interested in exactly what can you do with a Raspberry Pi. Wouldn't it be great if you could use your existing Windows 10 computer to test out one of these new systems just like any other app? You open it up, do some work, and then close it down when you're done. This is exactly what we're going to show you how to do today. Today we're going to look at using Oracle VM VirtualBox to run different operating systems on top of your existing Windows 10 PC or laptop. So we've seen any multiple varieties of Linux, we've seen Android devices, uh, Raspberry Pi, we've even seen people that have managed to get the older versions of Windows 98 running on top of Windows 10 by using this method. If you still have the installation disk around for that, feel free to give it a try. But today we're going to be using Linux Mint. So if you don't already have the download for that available, we do have a link for it in the description. Go ahead and grab that now. And when you're ready, we're going to open up the browser of your choice and go to virtualbox.org to get started. And the guys at VirtualBox are usually kind enough to have a big blue button right on the home page for us to click to download and then we'll select the link for Windows installer. Once that finishes downloading we'll click on that downloaded file to start the installation. These are pretty standard installation screens that we'll see. So we can click through next and go ahead and accept the defaults on all these unless you, you see something that you'd like to change. This warning here about your network interfaces, the only important thing to know is that you will lose network connectivity on your current Windows device just for a brief moment uh, while it's installing kind of a virtual network card. Uh, so just make sure you don't already have something downloading in the background a large file or if you're streaming a video you may lose connection for a minute but it'll reconnect on itself when it gets finished Once we get to this screen that says installation's complete, we'll hit finish. Uh, just to clean up the screen, we'll go ahead and close our browser, and now we're ready to get started with VirtualBox itself. When it first opens, you'll get a nice welcome screen. We'll go ahead and click New. And in this first text box, give it a name for your new device. Uh, this is a name that you will see in the list, so something easily recognizable. Uh, you can choose where to save it. Under for the, the type and all, depending on the name you chose, it may auto detect the type of machine that you're going to create if you give it a name that isn't very descriptive. Uh, it may not be able to tell what it is and you'll need to manually select it. From here, we can select the amount of memory or RAM for the virtual device to use. Of course, you would think that the more the better, but you also need to consider how much you're leaving for your Windows machine to continue to use. So if you have 8 gigs of RAM on your Windows device and you give your virtual machine 4 gigs of RAM, then just know that if you are running your virtual machine, you could now be cutting the amount of memory available to your Windows device by half. Since this is our first time using this Linux machine, we know we do need to go ahead and create the disk. Uh, we're going to leave it on the default of VDI for the device type as well for now. We're going to go ahead and also select next on this. Dynamically allocated means it will start small and it will grow the disk file as it needs to add more space, so it tries to keep it as small as possible. Uh, depending on what you're installing, you may be able to get away with as small as 5 gigs. Uh, we know we're going to add a few things, so we're going to go ahead and bump it up to take up to 20 gigs in this case. At this point, we have the software equivalent of a blank computer that you just opened out of the box, but there's no operating system or software yet. So we're going to click Settings. Now we're going to tell it to go use that Linux CD that we downloaded earlier. So we're going to click on storage and then under the IDE device, click on that empty CD icon and then 
one more CD icon over to the right side and then choose disk file and then go select where you downloaded that Linux Mint what's called an ISO an ISO file that's basically a virtual CD disk so select and OK through then we're ready to start this guy up and see what it looks like so back to our example of a fresh computer out of the box we've now put the CD in the CD tray uh, we've done it through the software but that's what the equivalent is uh, it's got a blank hard drive and so it's confirming do you want to boot off the CD because there's nothing on the hard drive yet that we created so we're going to tell it to go ahead and start up and load from that CD the first time in all right, so now we're seeing a splash screen. Usually you'd see from the PC manufacturer. And here is our first Linux Mint boot screen that will have some extra options if we ever need to do some troubleshooting or advanced items later. We can do that here before we let it finish the boot process. Now, depending on the speed of your Windows device that you're running this on, it may seem like this is taking a while to boot. Uh, but you know, don't don't forget that this is the first time in. So we're basically installing the operating system now as part of that. And then also, if you remember earlier, the option we said to dynamically size the disk up to 20 gigs. So it's starting really, really small. And as it's adding files, it's growing the disk. So that's taking a little bit of extra processing power right now that next time we come in, those files will already be there. All right, here we go. We are now booted into our Linux Mint operating system on top of our Windows 10 device. We can go ahead and close out a couple of notifications here at the top and we can see the whole screen at once. So go ahead and try out a whole new computer without adding any hardware to your desk. Now that you know how to install and run VirtualBox on your existing Windows 10 device.